Hi guys, in this video I'll cover memory. In particular, I will describe the stack and the heap. Now in order for us to understand the stack, we have to look at function calls. I've already written a basic C++ program and I define three prototypes on top of the main, func1, func2 and func3. I have the main function implemented and I implemented these three prototypes below the main. Now what I want to do is I want to look underneath the hood to get a basic understanding of what's happening in memory when this program executes. Now in short, you have to understand that the stack consists of frames. For each function call, a new stack frame gets pushed onto the stack. And when we return from the function, that function's stack frame gets pushed off the stack. So let's take a look. Let's run this program. Now, this program starts with the entry point. That is the main function. So on the stack, there's already a stack frame for the main. And inside the main, I declare a variable named A initialized to A. So this is what the frame looks like. It holds all the variables that are declared inside the function. Now, when I make a function call to func1, and I enter that function, a new stack frame gets pushed onto the stack. And this is the stack frame for function one. Now in function one, I declare a variable a initialized to two. This also explains why there's no confusion with the same identifiers of variables in different functions. Note that I have a inside the main and a inside function one. So this is what it looks like. These, the variables in function one don't have access to the variables in another stack frame on the stack. They're really local to the variables that are defined inside that function. And that's why there's no confusion between A in func one and A in the main. Now, when I go one step further, another variable named B is defined. So here, a new variable exists be initialized to the return value of function two. So first I have to execute that function. So I enter the function and it was a new function call. So another stack frame gets pushed onto the stack, this time for function two. Function two declares a variable B initialized to three, and then it encounters a return statement. Now return B, doesn't return the variable. It also doesn't return the address of that variable. It really just returns the value that's stored inside B. So if we look at the stack here, stack stores the value three. So three will be returned. When I, when I come back here, three will be assigned to B. And because we exited the function, that functions stack frame will be pushed off the stack. So currently on the stack are just main and function one. Now I go to the next statement and a new variable is created, variable C. C is initialized to three as well. So I have the three variables here inside function one. Now there's no return statement. So when I return from function one, function one stack frame gets pushed off the stack. And we are back at main. Now in main, I declare a new variable named result. And result is initialized to the return value of function three. So here function three, I make another function call. And this one is a function call for function three. In function three, I create a variable named C initialized to five. Now, before I move an, on and exit that function, what the stack will also tell you is the history of function calls. So we can see we were in main and from the main, we called function three. Now, if there were another function call from three to let's say function four, there would be another stack frame, function four on top of here. And we could see that function four was called from function three, function three for main. 
So the stack frame um, give, keeps track of local variables and functions, but it also knows where the function came from and how to return to previous statements in the code. So when I do return C, it knows um, how to get back to the main here. So let me go back to the stack. When we exit function three, the stack frame gets pushed off the stack and then the return value is assigned to the result variable here, which is five. And when we exit the program, all memory is freed up. Now this was the stack. So what happens with a heap? I cover dynamic memory allocation in a separate video. I really wanna focus here just on the stack. Now to recap, the stack is really just a stack of frames. For each function call, a new stack frame gets pushed onto the stack. The stack frame will keep track of local variables for the function. And when we exit the function, that stack frame gets pushed off the stack. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.